Like, I just feel in, in my heart, like a lot of you guys feel like, man, I'm so thankful that we're, we're about to get an opportunity to go back to normal. But I'm challenging you, not, challenging you not to go back to normal. Move forward in purpose, okay? Move forward in purpose. Don't miss that. Move forward in purpose. T, if you don't mind, we can start right now. I'm about to go on with, with Sam Collier. He was our guest for today. Thank you, guys. The missingpeacemovie.com. Pastor Sam about to pull up on us. There he is. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? How are you? Man, I'm so good. It's an honor to be on with you, man. Long time coming. You wearing your hat. I got my hat. And uh, yeah. it's ready to rock. Listen, I'm so excited about your story, bro. So I met you, and we were just loving God, right? Yeah. Um, kind of in the same lane, speaking, music, radio, interviews, et cetera, et cetera. And I just thought you was a dope dude. Like, I'm like, man, you know what? Dude, dope. A, look, a lot more polished than I am, and I appreciate that. No. <laughs> what you're not saying is you were encouraging me to get better, and you helped me a lot because I was really trying to figure it out. I was new to the game, taking notes, and uh, you, you were such a blessing to me, bro. Man, listen, Sam, oh, everybody in the chat right now say we're at least cousins, okay? <laughs> like we're at least cousins, at least. Who knows? Um, he is the pastor of Hillsong Atlanta. He's one of the most amazing speakers, leaders, and servants, okay? I'm going to say that uh, about him. Like, I've seen him serve everybody else's vision. And so now to see my bro get his just due, mm -hmm. being a pastor, um, being married. Shout out to your beautiful wife. I'm like, bro, I'm just so proud of you in that regard. Look at you. He put his hands up. Come on. He, he's <laughs> fruitful over there. <laughs> Come on, bro, and multiply. I'm trying. Um, but the thing that I love the most about all of the things that he does is that he is vocal about his adoption story. Yeah. Because him and I share that story. He was adopted and um, when he was a kid, and I want you to just do me a favor, Sam Collier, if you don't mind, can you just tell us a little bit about that adoption story that the world's been excited about? For sure, bro. First of all, it's an honor to talk to you about adoption because of how much you platform adoption. And I always say this, you know, it's like you, you can tell a real one, right? Like yeah. there are some people that talk about it because it's popular and there's other people that talk about it because it means a lot to them. And so for you, it's just an honor to talk to you because I know where your heart sits with it, bro. Long story short, got a twin sister and we both got adopted at two months. We were born into extreme poverty and uh, dad was addicted to all types of drugs and substances and had left the picture. My mother um, was in the hospital with three kids already on welfare. Um, some would say prostituting, right? In some of the papers, when you read kind of about her life, it says that they found or retraced her steps back to a prostitution house. And so here she is in the hospital with these three kids. Now she's got two more, five kids, 21. Dad left the picture trying to figure out, you know, do I raise them in poverty or do I give them up in hopes that things would work out, bro? And she gave us up and um, sent us up the river. I, I like to say like the Moses story, right? <laughs> and hopes that things would, would happen, man. And we got adopted by an incredible couple who had met a year prior in a laundromat in Washington, D.C. for the first time. Coming out of their divorce, my mother who adopted us and raised us was married to a Black Panther at the time. And he was an, he was an abusive Black Panther. Not all the Black Panthers are abusive, but he was. And so the night before she met my father, um, he had hit her in the head with a hammer. And so she gets up the next day, bro, like by any means necessary going, you know, she puts a gun in her purse and says, if I got to kill him to get out of this marriage, that's what I'm going to do. And heads to the laundromat for an alibi, meets my father, who was at the laundromat randomly on this day in the middle of his second divorce. She doesn't go kill her husband. They walk out together and bro, they give their life to Christ for the first time ever. And my dad is about 50 at the time. And so he's kind of starting the last chapter of his life. They get married, realize my mother can't have kids, the one that raised us. And so they said, well, we want to adopt. So they leave Washington DC, come down to Augusta, Georgia, where me and my twin sister had just been given up for adoption. Um, walked over to our crib and said, we want these two twins. 
Now, there's a lady running the home who comes from the back and says, no, you don't want them because you see where they come from. They're probably not going to be much. They come from addiction, poverty, welfare. And she says this. In fact, they'll probably be mentally challenged. So if this is your opportunity to do it right, you don't want to adopt them. And I'm going to use a phrase kind of, you know, that you always talk about, Willie, the idea of the power of prayer. Every time you're on radio, I hear you talking about the power of prayer and the power of God and how he can intervene in the situation. And so my parents took a step back and prayed to God and said, we hear what she's saying, God, but what are you saying about them? And my father would tell you that the Lord said, they're going to be okay. These are your, you know, these are your kids. And so they adopt us anyway, bro bring us home. Long story short, my sister gets all A's from kindergarten up to 12th grade, dual wow. scholarship to Spelman, Georgia Tech. And then I'm, I'm on with Willie Moore Jr., right? I mean, and, and <laughs> Pastor Hillsong and all that. So it's, um, it's just been amazing and, um, and awesome. I actually have a friend. Where'd he go? He left. Come here, come here, bro. Come here. You can't get in? I want you to see. He, he just, just tuned in. If you just tuned in here, Pastor Sam Cole, your pastor of Hillsong Atlanta, my dear brother, media mogul, doing a lot of amazing things. So if you're just tuning in and wonder who this amazing guy is, who who everybody right now in the chat is saying he's got to be your brother or cousin, <laughs> but we're brother for adoption, so we're both yeah. adoption. we're sharing our adoption story. Make sure you log on to the MissingPeaceMovie.com so you can get your tickets to see our my adoption story as well. But bring the guy, bring who Bro, someone. I got a special guest. He wanted to just say what's up to you. True phone duty. What up, bro? <laughs> what up, bro? Man, it's so good to see you. Come on, man. You already know. <laughs> man, I just wish I could grow some hair, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, trying to get them, I'm trying to get the muscles. I give you but, some of my hair. You give me some of the muscles. <laughs> true. God knew that I couldn't. I wouldn't be no good with that hair. <laughs> <laughs> he knew what to take. He be flexing on them. <laughs> <laughs> You look amazing, bro. Good to see you. I can't wait to connect with you soon, bro. Absolutely, bro. Love you, man. Indeed, love you more. Hi, right, yo. Man, that's so cool. So Truth, Truth is working with you guys at Hillsong? Yes, he just jumped on our staff as the pastor of apologetics, as well as one of our creative pastors. And so we just, we, we actually in the office right now, and I said, I'm getting on with Willie Moore. You got to come on and say what's up. So, Man, I appreciate that. Sam, I want to ask you this, though, bro. Like, yeah. you talked about... I get that paper that you read and you get an opportunity to not really know her name, but you get a chance to know what she did. Like when you found out that she could have possibly been in prostitution. Yeah. What did that do for you? And how old were you when you found that out? Man, I'll be honest, bro. I, I literally found that out like seven years ago. And I'm sure we'll get to this in a second, but it's obviously along the path in which, we were able to reunite. And we'll talk about that in a second. But um, bro, I found it because, you know, during this process of reunification, um, mm -hmm. my adoptive parents all of a sudden went into a safe and pulled out my all these papers that I didn't know they had on my, on my <laughs> life for the last 25 years. And I'm like, what is, and, and I'm reading this bro at Kinko's at 1 a.m. because I'm having to make a copy of them to send to the show that we're going to talk about. And I'm like going through all these documents, bro, and I'm reading stuff about my life. And I'm just like, this is this is wild. This is crazy. And, and I think for me, it just punctuated a little bit more um, why God would, I use this term, rescue me and my twin sister from, from this life. Because a, a lot of people, and you know this because you meet folks that have been adopted all the time, not everybody responds the same. Right. Right. The, and in fact, I would even say me and your story is probably foreign to the adoption community because there are so many individuals that's like, yeah, I got adopted and I was raised in a rich family or I was raised in a middle class, whatever, but they still left me and died. Right. Right. <laughs> I ain't had none of that. Right. Like, oh, Sam, they always ask me, they like, so how did you feel when you first saw her? I was like, Grateful? I, right. Right. So, and, and listen, a lot of people are like, so did you want it any other way? And did you just, I was like, listen, I won the parent lottery. So I couldn't even imagine my life not having Willie J and Floor right. Boy. So I was just grateful. And of you know, um, I, showed him, I showed him in the movie. So Foolish Me always has a camera when I'm speaking about adoption. 
So when we found my mom and my brother, like I just put cameras and caught like real natural moments of the emotion. But I've been going to counsel for the last two years, year and a half, just getting more tools on yeah. how to work with anger. Like when I seen my baby girl, bro, like when I had my baby girl and I looked at her and I realized like, Sometimes as, as Christian as I am, I could be just as much ferocious when it comes to business and working and doing yeah. what I, was I started taking counseling, having no idea that I was going to have these new tools to deal with and work with all of the new people that mm -hmm. were going to my life. And when I seen your story on Steve Harvey, and I guess that's a good caveat to run into here now, yeah. like I was in tears because yeah. I never met anybody who was like exactly like me, like like loving your adoptive parents, your forever parents, and then welcoming your mother without any alt and unforgiveness towards her. So tell me a little bit about that moment when you're sitting on Steve Harvey, you're there to talk about your adoption story, and then Steve says, here's your mama. Yeah, bro. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was crazy. And, you know, long story short, bro. So me and my sister, right, we go on to do what we're going to do. I go into ministry, my sister becomes this industrial engineer, we defy the odds, right, that was spoken. Right. And we're Christians, because my father was a pastor for about four or five years, we grew up in the church. And my dad says to us one day, as we're watching football, which NFL, you know, it's like a little bit of a tradition that we had in the house, nobody talks, he breaks the rule, and he just says, listen, you need to go find your parents. <laughs> I mean, just out of nowhere, and I'm like, what? Like, we're like, what's going on? Why do you keep saying this? And he said, well, you could grow up one day and marry your cousin, and you would never know it. And I said, hey, this man is like, what are you talking about? He was like, and he was serious. He was like, do you want to marry your cousin? Do you want to marry your cousin? <laughs> no, I don't want to marry my cousin. He's like, well, you need to go find. And so he says to me, bro, and I'm in no lie, he says to us, God told him while he was watching the Steve Harvey show, that Steve Harvey was going to help us find our parents. And I was like, what? Like, Man, he's just, I'm head on at this point. Right. You don't want to marry your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then he moves like into the prophetic. Oh, like, this is what's going to happen. And he convinces my sister two weeks later to write into the show because, you know, and again, me and you are very similar in terms of, I, like, whether I met her or whether I didn't, like, I was like, this would be great whatever i'm fine with it but i knew my sister would have had a much more difficult time and so i said to her it's your decision if you want to go meet them or if you don't i'm okay either way and so he convinces my sister to write into the show two weeks later nothing happens a year goes by they call uh my sister and then they call me and they say there's a lady that had just gotten the job from working at jerry springer which don't ask me how i know that detail and she said, they put 100 stories on my desk. Yours was the top story. I've been here for a week. We think we can help you find your parents. Do you want to do it? And I said, well, let me call you back. I'll call my sister. I'm like, Sarah, this is the moment. Like, we don't have to do this if you don't want to do this. But if you want to do it. And she said, I don't want to do it. But I feel like it's God because when does this happen? So we fly up to Chicago, bro. Me, my twin sister, my two adoptive parents. And when we get there, the producer says, we didn't find anybody, but we want to bring you on the show to make a plea that hopefully they would show up. And so, bro, I, I'm sure you've been on talk shows before, but if you're, if you're not Willie Moore Jr., if you're not Madonna or Kim Kardashian, they're writing your lines out for you. And so, right, they're like, and, and we rehearsed these lines 10 times. It's like, hey, here's what we want to say. Boom, we had to change the lines because like, well, I wouldn't say it that way, but they pre-scripted so I'm thinking, like, we're sold. Like, our parents are not here. <laughs> our siblings are not here. Nothing's happening. So we go on the show, bro. We get, like, the opening line. They go to commercial break. On commercial break, they say, listen, all right, now we're going to come back after commercial, and you're going to make the plea. We come back after commercial. Steve says, hey, I know I told you this, but that's not true. Your biological mother is here. Eleanor, come on out. And... On national television, bro, after 25 years for the first time, our mother walks out, bro. And it is surreal and crazy and everything that you think it is. <laughs> bro. So, so you in that moment, 
Like, I can just remember seeing her, and I just remember looking at her, because I don't think anybody understands what it's like, you know. Like, you and I, like, I understand you so much more, because you're, like, the overachiever. Right. It's, like, I just have to do right. Like, I had this, like, I wake up early. I'm going to work. I'm going to work harder than everybody else. And then I see this beautiful woman, and it was almost like the peace of God said, like, I knew what I was doing the whole time. Like, I remember... Mm -hmm. oh, like, did you feel like this awesome sense of peace the moment that you met her, or did it take a while for you to be like, yo, this is surreal. This really is happening. Bro, it was a lot going on. Um, I think for me, I was so shocked in the moment. Like, because in your mind, because my sister is crying, for one, and, <laughs> and I'm sitting here going, this is my biological mom. And then Steve has shocked us. And then my adoptive parents are in the audience. So I'm like, do I embrace her? Do I not? Like, what is that? And so honestly, bro, the, the, the entertainer, and you'll understand this, the entertainer in me kicks in. He's like, you on TV? <laughs> I feel like it's got, you got to get it together. We're going to deal with this later. But right. right now, the audience needs, <laughs> right? It's like, and so I put my head down. I'm like, I need, because my sister is crying. I'm just in shock. So I put my head down. I get myself together. And again, to your point, the peace of God says, I need you to be grateful. Because what do you have in your life that would require you or would make you not be grateful? It's like, I'm on the Steve Harvey show. I'm a pastor. Like, <laughs> I get everything that I've right. I'm I'm not on poverty. I'm not on welfare. I'm I'm been taken care of. I've had a stable home. I was raised in a Christian home. Like we could sit and think about what we didn't get or what we might have not gotten, or we could be grateful for what we actually got. Right. And so for me, I'm like, give me a hug. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like <laughs> your life has actually been hard. Yeah. My, and, and you know this, bro, like I had a nonprofit that was in the inner city for some years, bro. And so I was familiar with what life was like in poverty. And that was my family, right? Like that for all intensive purposes, God rescued me and they stayed in. So there were times they didn't have food, bro, for four days at a time. I always had food. I always had a bed. I always had shelter. What do I have to not be grateful for? So I'm like, give me, a, give me love. You know what I'm saying? So, right. But it right. Was, was conflicted because my sister. Thank is you for your sacrifice, mommy. Thank you for your sacrifice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like your story is just so amazing. Shout out to Tony, your beautiful wife. <clears throat> um, you know, for those of you just tuning in, uh, Pastor Sam Collier, Hillsong Atlanta. Um, they're in the building stages, but I tell you what, they're building something great. So if you're ever in the ATL or you want to watch online, make sure that you tap in with my dear brother. You'll also be able to hear this interview this Wednesday on the Willie Moore Jr. Show. You are part of a live recording, so I'm excited about this. Um, Sam, just wrapping everything up. Um, I want to encourage people, please log on to the missingpeacemovie.com. This is our final pre-screening, private screening of my adoption story. We've partnered with Bethany Christian Services. And so afterwards, there's an opportunity if you're looking to foster, um, to adopt, we have an opportunity for you to get as much information as needed. To be honest, for everybody who's looking and saying, well, Willie, I want an infant. Um, I want a small child. To be honest right now, um, the bigger need is for the older children, the preteens, the teenagers um, who just need love. They need a place where they can call, that they can call their own. You have the love in your home. And so there's an opportunity for you to connect with, with my teenagers uh, very, very soon. So make sure that you go to the missingpeacemovie.com. Make sure that you get your tickets to the film. It is showing this Sunday, okay? Wow. It is Adoption Sunday with the Will Flow Foundation. A lot of churches across the country are going to be streaming the film as well. Uh, the missingpeacemovie.com. Get your tickets and join us. Um, Sam, <clears throat> I just want to just kind of end with this because I need, I really need this help because I'm so fresh with this. Um, I got a biological brother. I now have my biological mother. I'm building a relationship with my biological um, father as well. I remember having to tell my forever mama, Flora Moore, um, I told her that can't nobody ever take your place. Like, you got to know that what you've done 
you know, I was able to make sure that my mom and dad never have to worry financially about anything ever in their life again. And that was something that I always wanted to do, but I had to let her know emotionally, nobody can never take, take your place. Yeah. My question to you now is like, what is the relationship with your forever mom and your biological mom? Do they have a relationship? And are you still staying close to your biological mom after, you know, after time and the family? fair is gone now it's time to build relationship has that been able to happen with your biological family and along with your forever family bro that's actually a phenomenal question and unless you're in it i think it is difficult for people to understand and i'm sure you can mm -hmm. because one of the things that you deal with the most is making sure that the ones that took care of you and sacrificed for you know that they will never lose you. Mm -hmm. And, and be, because, you know, they were the ones at the basketball games and at the graduations. And, I mean, that's your, these are my parents, you know what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> right. Um, right. With all that being said, bro, yes, we have all connected. Um, because I have three, as you said, I've, I've got three siblings already. It was a lot easier for me and the siblings to connect right. because there isn't a ton of, there isn't anyone in the sibling space, right? right? You can have as many siblings as you want and they never get in the way of, of each other. It's like, even right. if you had a brother, it's like, why well, can't I have another brother and another sister and another? And so me and my brother have been able to reconnect the most and we spend a lot of time with my biological mom. Um, you know, it's, we have definitely reconnected. We talked to my biological father, hadn't met him, actually lost him from COVID-19 before we were able to actually meet in person. But we talked twice. He was on, you know, he was still, you know, in the, in the drug life um, and dealing with a lot, even, you know, up until his death. Um, and so I was able to talk to him. But, bro, I've just tried to take it slowly because, and, and, I'll, and I'll just be honest, I had a conversation with my sister because she called me one day. She, she obviously is not like you and I. Um, there are a lot more emotions. I don't know if it's, a woman thing or just a ministry thing or whatever thing. But I had to give her permission to take another 25 years if she needed to, to get herself emotionally to the place to where she could embrace our entire biological family. For me, you know, God's grace, ministry, you know, working in the inner city, my arms flew open to everybody, but not without boundaries, right? right. It's like, let's just start on text message. <laughs> Text me as many times as you want. <laughs> I will text you back. You know, they, they, were, they came in town to celebrate my 30th birthday. It was awesome. They've been to see me preach. I'll have them down again, right? But, but, it's, but, but boundaries, I think, are very important for helping, one, just yourself deal with the emotions that you don't even know you have. Because yeah. for, for me and you, and you know this, every day is a new emotion. Every day it's, Oh, I got to deal with that. Oh, I didn't know this was here. Oh, wait, my sister. Oh, you are feeling this way. Oh, I got to lean in your direction. I didn't re So every day is trying to balance four families, yeah. right, all in one. And so, bro, I've just been giving myself time and trying to do the best to be the Christian that God created me to be and love everybody as much as I can while also being honoring to my emotions and then also to the emotions of the ones around me. So I don't know if that, but... No, that's good. That's good. You know, I'm still figuring it out. I told everybody I probably could have slept for about a strong year. Right. You know, wake up like every day, like, okay, cool. And, you know, just let my hair grow out and the yeah. ball and everything and just be like a nomad for about nine months. That would have been really good. But unfortunately, the responsibility and the call doesn't allow that. Um, right. But I, my best, bro, um, I, I acclimated my big brother as kind of my fullback, if you would. We, had, we share the same mother, same father. He's a coach. Very, you know, amazing brother. The, the type of big brother I needed because I'm a communicator and I can talk my way in or out of anything. Right, <laughs> so, right. He's a coach. Like, no, we're going to do this, this, and that. And the first week I met him and we started to meet people, I told him, hey, man, you know, I'm going to be honest. If I get scared, if I want to back out, that don't make me like a, a flake or anything. But this is very unique and new for me. So I would follow your lead. I'm a strong believer that submission is an invitation for someone else to lead. And so I submitted to his leadership and he gradually started rolling out. Okay, today we'll meet mama. Today we'll meet dad. Today you'll meet your grandmother. Uh, let's wait Woo. for him. Okay, now you can meet your sisters. And Woo. I said, 
to his leadership. And I just thank God for my brother Tony because he's been such an inspiration in as it pertains to thinking about my emotions, what it would be like to be a big brother, because it was something that he always wanted to do. And so to have somebody to kind of lead the charge and how I meet this new amazing family that I've been blessed to have, like he's been nothing more than a blessing, bro. So, uh, man, hopefully you and I will get an opportunity to do something special in the adoption space and or ministry. Yes, uh, you know, I just want to take these last few moments just to, you know, kind of love on you, bro, and let you know just how proud I am, um, godly proud of Godly proud of you. You know, there are so many people who will have um, such a competitive spirit that they can't they can't show the love that they will want to show. And so my prayer is that the Lord will send the people that you need, that he will send people who are going to build you up and not tear you down, um, that he will just let you operate in all sufficiency, that you will know that you're the head and not the tail, that you are above and not beneath, that God is for you and not against you, um, that you and your wife are going to come up with something so special in the entrepreneurial space that will actually make you one of the lead funders in your own church. <laughs> that's, that's the cool part. In Jesus' name. Like, yes. Hey, Sam, I just seen you. You know you a jokester and you have everybody laughing. But when it comes to offering, I just see you doing like a real loose offering and then <laughs> I think this year you get a chance to say, so listen, everybody who thinks that I'm here like to get anything, I'm probably giving more than everybody can buy in this church because of these entrepreneur ventures. So yes. help me out because I'm giving a lot too. And I just thank God that you're going to live in all sufficiency, man. I'm proud of you and Tom. Hallelujah, man. I love you so much. You know, you, you've always been a big brother. Following yeah. footsteps, taking notes. And of course, bro, got to have you at the church. Got to have you speak. Got I can't connect in all the ways, bro. Indeed. Well, listen, pr proud of your platform. Family, make sure that you follow him on Instagram. Make sure you follow everything Hillsong Atlanta's doing. Um, one of the few. June 6th. Yeah. June 6th. When is it? Grand opening. June 6th. Yes. <laughs> Put it on the calendar now. Bro, June put it down. Got to have you in the front row. Got to get you a seat. Bro, need you there. Need you there. June 6th, that is a Sunday Hillsong Atlanta. I am putting it in there right now because we are definitely going to support. Yep, Hillsong Atlanta. I'm going to be there, bro. Like, I'm so excited. Congratulations on having, um, was it Amy Grant just there or somebody? Yeah, Natalie Grant was just Natalie, there. Yeah, Natalie Grant, I think. Um, Andy, Andy Video, yeah. I seen that was nuts. Man, you just have, man, bro, I Listen, you already know what it is. Let's just keep winning. Let's keep supporting the kingdom of God, and let's watch God do the unthinkable, bro. Flat out. Yep. Flat out.